It's Senny and Finn's Games and Grabs Podcast. Now sponsored by Gamerborn Clothing. Go to gamerborn.co.uk and use code DDGAMING or 10% off your next order. What's happening, guys? Welcome to episode 61 of the Games and Grabs Podcast. I'm Sunny, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello. Finn, how you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah? Yeah, I'm good. How good. are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. Thank you very much for asking. No problem. Pleasure to be <laughs> here with you. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so we missed the week again. Um, we did. Due we, to unforeseen, unforeseen circumstances. Yeah, we missed the week. Basically, I went to a Smackdown <laughs> house show Yeah. on well, uh, the night that we would usually record our podcast. So, well, uh, nothing happened that week anyway, so who cares? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> nothing happened. Sometimes we, we might miss weeks, yeah. but it doesn't matter. It's fine. It's all good. We're still here with you in some form. Yes, we're here in spirits. Yeah. If you miss us that much, you can go check us out on Daydreamer because one of us is is there. Yes. Basically. <laughs> so if you, if you miss us that much, we can be found. Yes. You still get your weekly dose of Sonny and Finn somehow. Somehow, somewhere. This week Fairly sees week the return nice. of the WWE Encyclopedia skit that we do. Woo. Thank God. Yeah. I've missed it. Me too. I've missed it. Yeah, we've been, we've got, something's been missing the past couple of weeks. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but, uh, we've been all up in the air. We've had like a we've had a weird time. We have. Everything's changed. Everything but, has uh, completely changed. But yes. um, we're slowly getting to some degree of normality now. I think. I think so. It's getting we're getting getting, getting done. Everything back together. We're filming every week. Yeah. Where uh, you get to see our beautiful faces, which is something that didn't happen all the time before. Yeah. So that's new. You're welcome. You are welcome, YouTube. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, something else has made a return. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <gasps> Super Lucha. The Super Lucha has made a return. Ah, his mask. His Coming body is nowhere to be found. Just yes. To a YouTube channel near you. Curious. Very soon. We haven't seen him yet for a while. Yeah, he's been yeah. gone, but he's back. Good. We're not still not sure who's under the mask, but we yeah, know that he's it's back. A mystery. Let's figure, figure that out one day. Yeah. So Finn. Hello. Let's start the podcast as we do every single week. Okay. What have you been playing? I've been playing, playing a lot of Zelda, actually, this week. Yeah? Yeah. You can get into that. Uh, it's very addictive. Finding all the shrines and whatnot. So, uh, how much have you done, would you say, the mix? Obviously, it's a, it's a bloody enormous it's a, game. It's massive, yeah. Um, not a whole lot. Um, I just got into Zora's Domain. Uh, kind of accident. I was looking for the shrines and stuff. I kind of stumbled into this like story thing. Okay. So, okay, cool. I'll do this now, I guess. Um, but also got other story things going like somewhere else. Okay. I think I'm supposed to do that bit first because I'm kind of everything I'm finding now is kind of killing me in one shot. <laughs> yeah. it, it can be tough, man. I mean, it's all about finding the right weapons yeah. and f- f- basically figuring out how the game works for you. Yeah, seriously. Because you can pretty much play it however you want. Yeah. Not in a a Skyrim sense of freedom, I don't think. Oh, yeah. Not far off. No. It's possible just like go straight to the find the boss and attempt it with like starting gear if you wanted to yeah but no but, uh, you shouldn't <laughs> you definitely should not do that this is... absolutely no um, but it is awesome I mean yeah, we, we talked good. about it a few months ago when it came out a couple of months back when it came out yeah and I love it I think it's personally very very uh, easily one of the games of the year so far oh yeah easily. by some distance um, but yeah it's excellent I'm glad you're enjoying it yeah uh, playing that and playing a lot more uh, Persona 5 as always um, still grinding away at that. I am. Yeah, this is the second dungeon. Oh, okay. How was it? Uh, pretty good. I need to get back much, into but... it. I think. Yeah, you should. Because it's really, I, really good. I really loved it. I mean, obviously, that first ten hours or so just flew by. <laughs> yeah. And I did the dungeon. and I felt satisfied. Cool. And yeah, I need to get back into it because I really, really enjoyed that first bit. It's very Japanese and like. <laughs> it's very Japanese, weird. Yeah. Sex references for no reason. <laughs> um. Yeah. It gets. It gets. There's more of that. Um, so it gets sexier. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah? In, yeah. It's good. The, it's, it's it's all good. It's all it's all very Persona. The characters are excellent. The story's really, really good. Um, yeah. Okay. Definitely get back into Are it. all of the Persona games sexy in a sex type of sex way? Um, I think I think just Japan is sexy in all kinds of sex way. I think all yeah, of Japan is just like They are quite, they're quite horny over there, aren't they, in Japan? Yeah. Like a bit yeah. of, like a bit of the sex. Like a bit of the sex. Who, who doesn't? Sure, who doesn't love, who doesn't love there. the sex? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Japan is sexy. I want to say. It is. It is. I have. I now have two achievements slash trophies for looking up uh, a girl's skirt in a video game. Nice. So, okay, that, that's a thing. There's one in the uh, uh, lollipop chainsaw, and another one in the automata. Automata. For looking for looking up a girl's skirt. Yes. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. 
There's one <laughs> in uh, Yakuza Zero for going to like a porno theater. Oh yeah, and watching porn. Nice. And I think the picture uh, on the trophy is a box of tissues. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, and I think the trophy's called I Came Here for the Trophy. <laughs> so, nice. um, yeah. I think I've the, the, I've got, like, Yakuza, all of them, pretty much. Um, but I've only played, like, one to three. Yakuza, all of them. Is that a new, one of the new games? Yeah, yeah, it must be, yeah. yeah oh, yes. okay, yeah, cool. All of them. Um, but, yeah, I've played one, two, and three, but then stopped for some reason. Do you think sex is that. necessary in video games? Yes. Okay, well, that's the end of that debate. <laughs> okay, fair um, enough. I, I don't know. Um, no, but I think, I don't know. It's the wrong with a bit of... Um, How's your father? Yeah. Why not? Who cares? Sure. It's Japan. I'm not, I'm not so sure. Japan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Japan. Right, fair enough. But I don't know, man. I'm, I'm not sure about sex in video games. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. It's like it's not like full on sex or anything like that. It's, it's not like The Witcher bit. and Mass Effect and yeah. these games that have sex scenes in them. I'm not... I don't care. They don't really <laughs> add anything to the game. No, they don't. At the same time, I don't really care that they're there. They weren't, they weren't there when it bothered me. It's like, yeah, they're there. What but else? boobs, so who cares? Yeah, boobs. Right, yeah, fair boobs, enough. Boobs are nice. Sure. Hashtag boobs are nice. <laughs> hashtag boobs are nice. Yeah. There you go. Use the hashtag boobs are nice to... <laughs> <laughs> this week's episode title, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag... We'll probably get loads of views we would, because we of that. Yeah. Yes, certainly would. It's like uh, when we did our VR porn episode. <laughs> yeah, it was and it's like, views, yeah. what? It's got porn in the title. Let's get on that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and when they realise it's two idiots talking nonsense, they're like, this is Don't not off. about what I thought it was about. <laughs> yeah. So hashtag boobs are nice. Yeah, there you go. There you go. What else have you been playing? <laughs> um, that's about it, really. It's presented five and Zelda, really. Okay. Yeah. And it's a WWE 2K17. Stand up for stuff uh, that will be happening later in YouTube. Mm. Stay tuned. Yeah, we're going to be starting a brand new series <laughs> on YouTube where we play WWE 2K17. Against our will. <laughs> thing is... I mean, it is fun once you, once you get through all the bullshit. Yeah, but there's so many bullshit things that happen while you're playing it, <laughs> yeah. and that's that's where it becomes a problem. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, I don't mind the game; I think it's okay, and I have some fun when I play it. Like when I streamed it on the Saturday morning show the other week, I was like, "This is okay." I mean, I'm, I had fun with it, yeah. but there's always things that we find in the game that we laugh at, like <laughs> that aren't supposed to be laughed at. Just dumb glitches, yeah, dumb glitches. Dumb out of dateness. Look, we've talked yeah. about this so many times before. And we'll talk about it again when WWE 2K18 yep. <laughs> races us with uh, its presence later in the year. I don't want it. <laughs> but we're punishing ourselves by continuing to play it to bring content to you. Yeah. The people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I've not really been playing much this week. No? Uh, I started out last two. I can't remember if I told you that. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm stuck already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk pretty quickly and add last one as well and kind of gave up. And so, yeah. Okay. Uh, I will go back to it, but I gave up with that last one as well and then went back to it and finished it at some point. Um, but it's good. They, It's prettier. Yeah. As is natural progression, of course. Right, it now, yeah. But it, it's cool. It's in a completely <coughs> different setting. Obviously, the first one's in the uh, hosp- mental hospital or school or... Something like that. Yeah. It's in a yeah. mental hospital, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Uh, this one is out in the open. I oh. think you're in uh, Hicksville, USA. Nice. Um, where people are... And it's, it basically, it's based on religion and sex. Uh, here, there it is again. Hey, yeah, it is. Hashtag <laughs> boobs are nice. Games, yeah. yeah, it's a recurring theme today. It is. It's weird. We, uh, me and you were doing the Saturday morning show this morning <laughs> and like instantly, I, I think I said the words, oh God, I'm getting bummed here and not in a good way. <laughs> and then we started laughing. <laughs> nice. And then it, it was like a recurring thing all the way through... The, the show was awesome. so weird. It's like, <laughs> go go watch the Saturday morning show where me and Mule play Star Wars Battlefront. And yeah, it, it got weird real quick and awesome. continued to be weird for the remainder of the show. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, play, I started out last two. Uh, I started playing with, and I'm loving uh, NBA Playgrounds. Oh, uh, yeah. Which is a new nice. um, NBA game and it's done in the old style of like NBA Jam. And thing and games like that from cool. yesteryear, yeah. And it's very very cool. It's a really cool throwback. Uh, mechanically, it works very well. It's a lot of fun and it's addictive. There's a couple of things in there that I'm not too sure about. Uh, rebounds maybe aren't great. Okay. Um, but it's not a massive hindrance, and it's uh, a lot of fun. It's cool that you basically unlock things as you progress through the game, which is great. 
uh, that old school sort of actually having to play the game to unlock stuff instead yeah, yeah. of just buying, buying it. Buying DLC, yeah. But it's, um, yeah, it's really, really good. So I, I highly recommend it. It's only, it only came out last week, but cool. um, it's very cool and I highly recommend it. You put on stream. It would be a fun one to stream, actually, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's a really good game. And I, I, I did plan on streaming it, and then I just didn't this week, but mm-hmm. I will. Cool. Um, have I been playing anything else? I've been playing a lot of Pro Evolution Soccer 2017. Again, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm really back into it, like, in a massive way. Awesome. Uh, it just, I, I, I think, oh, I'll put it on for a couple of games. <laughs> and then, and then I put it on for a couple of games. And then four hours later, this is... I've, I'm like, oh, I should probably do something <laughs> with my life. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but and then I, and I, like a I, like I said before, I've been playing Star Wars Battlefront. Nice, that was me with um uh, Overwatch for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> just, I just play a couple of games of Overwatch, and then I follow like later like ten eleven o'clock at night. Yeah, like, oh, I was probably going to bed. Now nah, it's a couple more games of Overwatch. Yeah, <laughs> it's two o'clock in the morning. It's like oh. it's like last Saturday <laughs> morning. I did the Saturday morning show, and then uh, I did some stuff for a couple of hours, like probably watch football or something, or whatever. So well, I'm going to go chill out in bed for a, a little while. Because <laughs> that's what you do on a Saturday. Of course. And then four hours later, I was like, shit. I've just been playing this game all day. And then I went out with Gaming Mule. Nice. Yeah. Uh, good <laughs> times. Gaming Mule. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why not? I like yeah. the picture you posted on Discord, by the way. I'll, I'll put that somewhere on the screen. Uh, he <laughs> he looked a shambles. He did a bit. <laughs> it was unbelievable. That I mean, that is that was late on at night. <laughs> but the car, oh my god, you'll see it anyway. It's it would have popped up on your screen. Um, so sorry, mule. Yeah, well, sorry, mule. sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, sorry, not hashtag sorry, not sorry. And uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, mule. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's uh, move on okay. to some gaming news. Okay, this week, okay, um, Square Enix released sort of figures for games from the past financial year mm-hmm. and it would appear that hitman didn't do so great yeah um which Sorry, hitman. is a real surprise to me yeah it's a shame because it's pretty really good <laughs> everyone has sort of lauded it as the best hitman in ages and it is the best hitman in ages i mean the, i don't think there's been a good one since blood money i want to say you really won't um yeah i think that, I think that hurt, it hurts it's slightly being episodic um, because people automatically assume that oh it's not going to be as good everyone's it's going to suck oh, I want it all at once but then it takes turn out to be a really good idea and it worked really well yeah but I think that stigma was holding has like holding over it and it's like people don't want to buy it because of that and yeah I think it, I think it was that as well I think it's um, I mean I tweeted out about it I was like I, I can't believe that Hitman sold so low and yeah people like uh, I've not played it so I can't say it's a bad game but you know, uh, I don't like the episodic approach. And I think that was the general, even like when it was announced, like you just said, people were like, but why are they doing it like this? This is yeah. Hitman. It's a big franchise. Just bring it out as a, you know, as a full game. And and again, reiterating what you said, it did work episodically because there's so much crammed into the episodes that it you, you can just get hours and hours out of one episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's the ep- game, episodic whatever. approach in the end actually worked out really well. It did. Um from a critical perspective yeah but from a commercial standpoint it would appear that it's definitely hurt it yeah, people had shame. made their minds up they did yeah and the, the, I'm going to buy this no. yeah the physical release came too late yeah I uh, think so yeah they should have the, they should have I mean it only came out fairly recently I think physically I think so good ones go yeah and I think if, they, if they'd have done it straight away after episodes four or five or whatever however many there is if they'd have done it straight away then, I think maybe it'd have been okay. Yeah, maybe. I would have was. I haven't played it myself. Uh, I watched other people play it. It looks really cool. But, uh, yeah, just one that's never really got myself got into. Yeah. I mean, you can, if you buy it cheap in a sale, do buy it because it is very, very good. Oh, yeah. It's just a shame now because IO, IO Interactive, who are the team behind the Hitman franchise, looks like they're going to be sold off by Square Enix. Yes. Interesting. Interesting move. Um, just seems like it's kind of Square Enix's fault as well. <laughs> it's kind of like their fault. They went episodic and it's like, oh, it didn't work. Well, you're fired now. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> so they've made a, a brilliant game, but because yeah. of Square Enix's decision to bring it episodic, it's now all of a sudden the blame is on IO Interactive and that's yes. a real shame. And I hope uh, IO Interactive find their feet and I they do we- get to keep making Hitman games depending on who owns that franchise. Hmm, I'm sure. Does Square own it? I don't know. Good I'm not sure either, but um, I mean, 
like when 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 this announcement came, people were like, hashtag oh, save Hitman, <laughs> save Hitman. It's like the game is still very much alive. It's just oh yeah, you still play it. Still, you know, it's still it. you know, you can still play the current one. And the reason that you're doing the hashtag save Hitman is because more. you people haven't fucking bought it in the first <laughs> oh, place. Yeah, yeah. So this is just... go and save the one that's already that's led everyone into this stupid mess. Yeah, I saw you do that. Yeah, you should. It's, I think you can get it in sale. I bought it in sale. It was like seventeen ninety nine for all episodes. Nice, not bad. So it was well worth it. But yeah. um, hashtag save Hitman is a bit over the top, in my opinion. Like the hashtag save Shenmue from a little while ago, just seems a bit. <laughs> hey, Shenmue's been saved. There's gonna be a third one. Yeah. And the HD collection, right? Sega. Yeah. All mm. right. Okay. Mm. HD collection, please. Thanks. Finley's still living on, <laughs> clinging onto this dream. It's going to happen. The, One day. The HD collection's going to happen. 2019. It'll happen. <laughs> Jesus. 2020. It'll happen. <laughs> uh, still waiting. It's going to be an HD collection. Well, well, it'll be <laughs> episode 685 of the Games and Grass podcast. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, the HD collection's coming, right? We've we've all done with Shenmue 3. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we've still not got the, the HD collection. It's Never coming. One day. No. <laughs> Hashtag save Shenmue HD collection. Loads of hashtags. <laughs> there is. <laughs> hashtag save show me HD collection for Finn for me that's yes. a long hashtag it is <laughs> now going yeah. back to the episodic thing mm-hmm. do you think the episodic approach to Final Fantasy 7 remake will have the same mm. sort of impact good question um, I don't know probably not as bad an impact just because it's Final Fantasy 7 and people have been asking for the remake for so so long um I don't know. It's an interesting approach. They might just go ahead and cancel it because of how badly it landed. And then, you know what? Screw it. We'll just make it the full game and just wait a bit longer. I mean, in my opinion, that's what they should do anyway. Yeah. They yeah. should just bring it out as the full game. Final Fantasy VII wasn't in episodes, obviously. Because <laughs> no. that wasn't I mean, the that, thing then. No, it had separate discs. It's like it came on three discs. So I guess you could split it into three separate episodes for each disc. But it's still... Mm, I guess, but there's only in three discs because the it could game was one, bloody yeah. huge. Yeah. True. Um, I I think they should bring it out as a full game, and I think Square are going to see what's happened to Hitman, mm. and maybe uh, hinge that decision on Final Fantasy VII remastered or remake or whatever you want to call it. Yes, on just, that. I yeah, I think that'll probably happen. Just don't cancel it, <laughs> please. Still make it happen. I don't. I don't think they can cancel it at this point. I hope not. <laughs> I don't think they they really can because yeah. people will just go ballistic. Oh god, yeah. People have been waiting for it for so long. Yeah, and they'll just. They'll just go skit. It's reactions, E3 reactions when it got announced. It was insane all over the place. Yeah. The <laughs> like, internet will melt if it gets cancelled. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I'd be uh, surprised if it gets cancelled. I really will. But, yeah. Um, yeah, hashtag like, well, save Hitman. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. There's <laughs> not been a good one since Blood Money. There you go. I said it. There you go. Sorry if that upsets the hardcore hashtag save Hitman Ooh. fan. Fan. Fan bandwagoners. From this fan week. Magnus. Fan Wagoners. <laughs> Just making words up. Hashtag Fan Wagoners. <laughs> Hashtag Fan Wagoners. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Um, you got any gaming news? Um, not really. There was that uh, Rapper the Rapper and um, Guitar Man mashup, which has been officially confirmed now. I think we talked about last week saying it was a rumour, but yep. it's now been officially confirmed with the trailer. So that's cool. Project Rap Rabbit. Yes. There's not much of a trailer, but it's there not, is one. This, yeah, it's all right. I mean, more more rhythm games are always a good thing in my book. I love rhythm games, yeah. Me too, yeah. Um, I've requested a code for it. Uh, I think it's a rhythm game. It's called uh, Akibar's Beat. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's a rhythm game. I think so. Maybe. M- maybe? We'll see. I'm it's- making things up, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Akibar's- it sounds like one, right? Akibar's Trip was like a mediocre JRPG, I think. Okay. But, yeah, Beat, I think, is a rhythm game, but I'm not sure. Pretend, we know nothing. <laughs> there's a Pretender 4 with the game, which is really good. Called really? Dance, called Dancing All Night. Really? Yeah, it's excellent. Really, really good. What kind of rhythm game is this? It's like a just like a rhythm game. Like, kind of like a Hatina Miike kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, with the characters dancing around in the background. It's got fresh buttons at the right time. Right, okay. The music's excellent. The music in all Pretender games, so it's just amazing. Like, give it a Pretender 5. I'm interested <laughs> in this rhythm game now. Yeah. It's on, what was it's, this on? It's PS2? On, v- on Vita. On Vita? Yes. Right, okay. Um, I have it digitally. I don't know if you can access my thing from Peter, but if you can, you can download it. Okay. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Hasuno Miku is, is my is my jam. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> because of you. Yeah. You're welcome. I love it. <laughs> Alright, so there's not much gaming news this week, really, is yeah, there? Yeah, not really. Nothing major. Jumped no. out at me this week. Well, so, 
by the time you hear this, um, Backlash will be very quickly creeping up on you. Yes, this Sunday. Um, this coming Sunday. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through our Backlash predictions, mm-hmm. like we always do. Yeah. But before we do that, um, as I mentioned before, I went to a SmackDown house show this past uh, week, yeah. and it was very, very good. Cool. It was a very enjoyable show. Um, basically saw the, the entire SmackDown roster. Nice. It was pretty cool. Saw Nakamura versus Ziggler. Excellent. And they had a, a slow-ish match. All right. In the um, sense, I was sort of made a backlash in the match. Maybe. I mean, I'm hoping that they have better chemistry, you know, than they did when I when I saw them. Because mm, okay. the match was the match was slow. Yeah. Uh, Nakamura did his usual kicks and all <laughs> that, and you know the ex- the reverse exploder and the Kinshasa. And he did win, of course. To be fair, they've got me on the same match for like seven days in a row now. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> like, the same motions every, every time. Yeah, but there's a lot of sort of uh, chin locks. Okay. And stuff on the floor, and uh, it, was, it was just—I mean—that was the opening match oh, right. okay. of, of the of the show, which is, which was—I don't know—it was just an interesting way to start it. Quite a slow, methodical, yeah, match. We did pick up towards the end. I don't know. I, I'm just hoping that they can put on a, a better show when it's on TV. Yes, I think to give will. Nakamura a good introduction to the main roster. Yeah, I, I think so. I think I think they're hyping Nakamura up. So we'll, we'll pretty much all the promos. But bad backlash will have Nakamura in them. Mm. Uh, watching NXT this, this week, it's like Nakamura's everywhere. It's like backlash this week, Nakamura, look up Nakamura, yeah. yeah. So I, I think it's going to be good. Tell you what I could do without. Ziggler? No, no. <laughs> well, that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Ziggler anyway. You know this if you have, if you are a regular listener. <laughs> yeah. The artist known as. Oh, God, yeah. Why? Why do that? Because Prince did it. I don't know. <laughs> so weird. I it's mean, dumb. there was like a little video before the, the show started. And uh, it was like Nakamura talking in his very broken English. <laughs> but he, he called himself the King of Strong Style there. Yeah. And then when he's coming out to the ring, the artist known as Shinsuke Nakamura. It's like... Mm. Yeah, weird. Weird yeah. one. The art, I just don't like it. It just sounds crap. It does. I agree. Yeah. Just, just be on being old regular old Nakamura. Or the King of Strong Style. Yeah, all that. Like this t-shirt suggests. Yeah. <laughs> but like his new t-shirt, like that thing, I'm not sure what it is, like a V. All right. Made of swords. Oh uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Because Weird. hashtag swords. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah swords. And I think it says the artist on the on the sleeve. I just think it's a stu- a, a crap name. It is. It's a bit crap. I mean, Gold Dust had the artist at one point. Oh, did he? The artist formerly known as Gold Dust. Oh yeah. Yeah. Weird. And when he was wearing like fishnet bras and oh, yeah. weird things. That Hopefully happens. Nakamura won't do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was it was a it was cool to see Nakamura though. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Very very cool. Very cool. What else did we get? We saw. A six women tag team match. Cool. So Charlotte, Naomi, and Becky Lynch. Yep. <laughs> against Natalia, uh, Tamina, and Carmella. Yep. That's their pay per view match as well. <laughs> right, so basically, I saw backlash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> backlash. Yeah. Um, and that was cool. Um, James Ellsworth was funny. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, we saw a comedy six man tag team match, which was the Ascension. Poor and attention. There's going to be comedy. <laughs> no. In NXT, they're like these unstoppable like beasts. Yeah. And now it's like comedy. What? What? We have attention. We lose all the time. There was a bit where they were chasing, everyone was chasing each other around the ring. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then the last next to us were like, why do we watch wrestling? <laughs> and I turned to them, I was like, it gets so difficult to justify <laughs> watching wrestling when it's stuff like this. Yeah. Both teams have deserved better. And it was Brizango and uh, Ty Dillinger. So Ty Dillinger was also in this comedy tag team match. I can't remember who their partner was. It was the Ascension and someone else. Um, I'm trying to think of who it could be. Yeah. I don't know. Either way. Someone crap and unmemorable. <laughs> yeah. Either way. It was, uh, it was, I mean, it was cool to see all those guys, but it was weird to see some sort of comedy match. Yeah. Uh, Brizango picked up the win. Cool. Because, of course, they're the number one contenders for the tag team titles and they should do. There you go. Uh, it was weird because I thought Ty Dillinger would, get the pin, would score the pin for. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't this week. Smackdown either. Well, last week's Smackdown. Oh, God. So this is weird. It's happening already. Yeah. Poor Ty. They're, they're, uh, they're Tyler, Tyler Breezing him. They're Tyler Breezing him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Ty, no. They're Tyler Breezing him now. But the 10 chance are so over. It's so over there in WCW, WCPW when we went. Yeah. <laughs> they're everywhere. Yeah. They're so over that they were almost non-existent in Birmingham on the <laughs> Wednesday night. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shame. They were there for a little bit, but it, it wasn't like... But you read Birmingham. True. <laughs> Uh, one of the okay. cool things 
basically. was seeing the UK Championship guys. Oh, yeah. So, sort of nice. six-man tag. It was Tyler Breeze, Trent Seven, and someone else. Someone else. Against Pete Dunn, Joseph Connors, and someone Joseph else. Connors. Cool. And that was really cool. They, I think they put on the match of the night. Sweet. So, uh, that was cool to see them. Yeah, yeah. And Trent Seven picked up the win with a uh, with the reverse Death Valley driver. Ooh, nice. Which I've... For, uh, the Burning Hammer, of course. Oh, wow. That's, uh, a, that's a dangerous move. <laughs> yeah, they, they've WWE'd it. Oh, they are. So basically, it looks like uh, an attitude adjustment, but done. So Trent Seven get him on his shoulders, but he throw him off instead of dropping him on his uh, head. Wah, wah. Yeah, the WWE'd it. Yeah. I had uh, one um, uh, Brian Kendrick getting on two of our live. Not yeah. two of live, but the Cruiser 8 Classic. Yes. That was cool. And everyone was like, I can't believe we've just seen a Burning Hammer on WWE. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, no one could believe it at all. Yeah. Um, so Jericho versus not Jericho sorry Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens ooh I guess which was cool uh, short but it was cool uh, Kevin Owens did like a, a promo part way through the match and after the match as well <laughs> nice so that was pretty cool uh, the main event was Jinder Mahal who is bloody massive in real life <laughs> I bet uh, Randy Orton and AJ Styles cool uh, we saw American Alpha um, the Usos and the Colognes cool. that was quite cool as well and yeah it was a, it was a good fun show cool it That's was a fun. typical WWE house show, very well produced, very um, very well set up. Nice. It was good. It was a good show. Excellent. Finn. Hello. Let's talk about Backlash. Okay. Let's run through the five matches that they yes. have a whopping on five matches. Backlash. Weird. There'll probably be some sort of pre-show match added at some point, I imagine. Yeah. Um, but for now, what we have is, uh, first match I have is the Usos versus Breezango. Us, us. Us, us. Blood Ooze family Ooze fam Ooze um, yeah well, tag team championships who are they fighting sorry uh, Breezango oh of course um, yeah this Super is awesome. uh, an interesting one because I, I never expected Breezango to work on the main roster but because they're funny yeah and entertaining uh, and entertaining they've got this opportunity yeah and Good. I think they'll I think they might win it really the Usos are doing nothing true but they're not doing anything with those belts True. So what's the point in having them? Give them yes. to Breeze Anger. Let them have fun for a little while. Yeah. Wrestling's about fun, right? I guess so. I like, like, I like the Usos. like new evil Usos. I like the Maybe. evil Usos. That's fine. Yeah. But they've had the tag team titles twice now and they've not really done anything with them. At least with Breeze Ango, they could maybe have some sort of fun run with the titles. Like, they could win it in funny ways and they could keep hold of the titles for a little while. I guess. Just have a bit of fun with it. Give, give them... Give give them give them that bone. Yeah, why not? Um, I disagree. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. I'm gonna say the Usos. Okay, this is going to give them another. I think uh, Bizango just exists to be fodder for the Usos to help them, you know, become to that next level. Maybe I don't know. Just, just maybe to be another opponent to beat. I don't know. Just <laughs> another step on the ladder. Yeah, exactly. It's awful bad because Bizango, I like him. But at, that's, um, at this point, though, do the Usos need that step up? I mean, the, the Usos are the Usos. They're the most established team. On SmackDown. Yeah. So do they need to go over quote unquote <laughs> jobbers um, yeah. uh, in the form of Breezango to establish themselves? I don't think they do. Probably not. But I think I think they're better matches to be had for the Tag Team Championships like Usos versus American Alpha which I guess we've already seen. But Breezango uh, aren't bad wrestlers. They're not. They're great. They're good so. to, and, they, and they, they work as that team. True. Yes, it is. It is incredibly stupid. <laughs> Fashion uh, that the, the like they look like Chippendales. <laughs> they do a bit. They just hashtag Chippendales. <laughs> they do like just oily model men. <laughs> yeah, and it sh- it shouldn't be over, but people seem to like it. Uh, yeah. I've grown to like it. Me too. And I don't know. I just why else would they be put in that position? I don't know. You you bring up a good point. But I still think I always do, Finn, and I'm always wrong. Yeah, you usually are. Yep. <laughs> we, so, we both are you know, for, for as good as my points are, in my opinion, and Finn's opinion, yeah. they are usually wrong, so take them for what they're worth. Vince McMahon doesn't listen to us, sadly. He should. He should. He absolutely should. <laughs> but he doesn't, and that's that's a real shame. It is a shame. Or maybe he does and just fucking hates us. <laughs> yeah. Well, these guys won't. Ah, let's do the opposite. Yeah. 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 Look at these little idiots. Dad. These little marks. <laughs> Got them marks. Got them marks. Uh, so the next match I have is uh, Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles for the US Championship. The New Age of America. 
the new face of America, Kevin Owens. Yes, it was funny. The the uh, he made the ring announcer guy in, uh, introduce him twice. Oh, yeah, <laughs> nice. Um, this, I mean, this is a main event quality match. Oh yeah, for sure. It should be the main event. Not going to be there. No, it won't be. But uh, because big sweaty man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big sweaty gender. Yeah. This is big, massive sweaty gender. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin yeah. Owens wins. Uh, I don't think it's time for him to drop the US title just yet, but I think they'll have an amazing match. Oh, yeah. I think they'll have sure. a really, really great match. The match of your life, for sure. Easily. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't see what's going to top it. Yeah. Because... I can't see gender to mouth top it. So topping that. Um, no, I can't either. But, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be brilliant. Um, AJ Styles is sort of stuck in a mid-card slump at the minute yeah, after having a uh, a real monster of a year last year yeah I mean AJ Styles is seemingly just sort of happy to do whatever he's being told to do yeah and he does it very well every single time so um, this feud um, eventually I imagine he will come out with the US title Maybe. just not tonight not okay. tonight uh, yeah I'm going to say Owens as well just because um, yeah they never very long Maybe just one of them, Jericho. It'd be weird if we lost it already. Yeah. Um, but as long as the match is amazing, I don't really care. Yep. I don't really <laughs> care either. It's, it's not going to ruin my. Uh, not going to ruin my day. No. Going to ruin my life. Couldn't care less. Be perfectly happy. Just to yep. see you wrestle forever. It's going to be uh, a very, very good match, and <laughs> yes, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure it really will be. Absolutely. And uh, this new, this new face of America gimmick hasn't been along long enough for them to kill it. Not just yet. No. no. Because it's working. <laughs> it is. Because yeah. it gets Owens over as the heel that he is. He's got his face on the on the ramp. Yeah, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, so there's there's no way they're going to kill it just yet. No way. Uh, so Owens wins. Yep, for sure. Uh, so then we have uh, uh, Charlotte, Naomi, and Becky Lynch versus the Welcoming Committee. Uh, stupid name. Um, Natalia, Tamina, and Carmella. Are they called this because Charlotte's obviously only just come in to SmackDown and I they're think welcoming so. her? I think that's what it is, yeah. It's a dumb name. <laughs> Who have we got? And it's a good guy, isn't it? Let's face it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> Team Charlotte will win. Yeah, for sure. Um, they won on the house show. Yeah, <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Um, and I expect no different here. Um, Carmella isn't isn't good. No. Um, she's good looking. Yeah. But she's not a good in ring competitor. Yeah. She's not advanced in the way Stars. the likes of Alexa Bliss yeah, has. Yeah, Alexa Bliss. Um, since their move, since the move from NXT during the draft. Yes. She's kind of been stuck in this like non-storyline bubble of nothingness. Yeah, and she's doing this matches, weird very, very gimmick well. with James Ellsworth. Yeah. Um, who still has a job. Somehow. Incredibly <laughs> against, still against has a odds. job. Had his own T-shirt, yeah, all that crap. And at the minute, he's a a backwards cap tracksuit wearing gangster. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. let's be honest, it sucks. It does a bit. Uh, Natalia is obviously a veteran and is very good in the ring, but is not over. No, um, not I'm great on the mic. Not great on the mic. Um, just. I don't know, there's something weird about Natalia, isn't there? Yeah, sitting off. There's something just not right about Natalia. I don't know, and I'm (laughs) sure she's a lovely person. (laughs) Yeah. um, I don't know, it's just, from the weird bondage gear, do do, do we now, do we still don't know know. if she wears underwear or not? Tweet us. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you you (laughs) could see, like, uh, we had decent seats, Hmm. and you could, like, she was, like, tagging that way, so you could see her her buttocks, like, through her, because that's the way that she was, like, (laughs) posturing. Yeah, you could see through... So I'm not sure she was wearing legs. underwear because yeah. otherwise you'd see the lines because her gear is tight. You think so, wouldn't you? I hope she is. I do hope she is. Yeah, bizarre. We've had this conversation resting, resting many weird. times, and it's one of the. <laughs> in my opinion, it's the, uh, the the biggest mystery in professional wrestling today. Yeah, I agree. Does yeah. Natalia wear underwear? Not twice, Sin Cara, not the world champion. I mean, he should be. He is in GGW. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Come uh, as he should be. Yeah. Ultimate Sin ultimate Cara. Ultimate Sin Cara, yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> GGW World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah. Um, another well-known luchador is the other world champion. He is. This is the Games of Grab Champion. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, does Natalia wear underwear? Question mark. It's a, it's a, it's a mystery. It is a mystery. <laughs> uh, so, that means just to uh, Nakamura versus Dolph Ziggler. The artist known as Nakamura. Because <laughs> 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 think, think and words. I, I can, I can words. <laughs> <laughs> Shinsuke Nakamura versus Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Ziggler buff. Here we go. <laughs> Nakamura. There's no way. There's, <laughs> like, they've hyped him up so much. Yeah. If he loses now, it's all for nothing. It's seriously, yeah. He's on the posters. He hasn't... They're, they're not having him wrestle on... Uh, main roster TV until Backlash. Yeah. He's going to win. Does, um, if he doesn't win, then that's... Then that is ridiculous. It is. That, that, it just seems like a crazy thing to me. If he doesn't win, it's like... Well, the only way I can see him not winning is if this is why it's like Dolph, like, grabs a chair. But even then, he needs to win because it'd be DQ, wouldn't it? So, Unless the ref's knocked out. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Because there's, you know, there's not thousands of people in the arena. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. not a ton of refs backstage. Yeah. Just that one ref. Who's Just because wrestling, one. yeah. Yeah, there you go. But that could happen, yeah. He can get it down. Dolph grabs a chair and beats him up. I don't know. But it's not going to happen. I think Nakamura's going to win clean. And... I think Nakamura has to win. Yeah. I think if he's going to have a, a big future on the main roster, which he absolutely should have. I mean, he's not getting any younger. <laughs> um, what is he? After, uh, over mid-30s now? I think so. I think he's yeah. like 36, something. Yeah. So, I mean, if he's going to have a big impact on the main roster, which he absolutely should do, then uh, he needs this win to help momentum. Yes. Um, it was quite funny when we were at the wrestling in the night. There was just people in the like some marks, <laughs> marks, marks. They're in the background going wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Just, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Wrestling. House shows are very much for kids. But oh yeah. You do yeah. get the marks there as well. <laughs> we were there, so oh, yeah. yeah. Um. Yep. Nakamura wins, and I, I can't see any other, any reason why he wouldn't. Yeah. There you go. I agree. Because why wouldn't he? Tune in to next week's edition of the Games and Grass podcast <laughs> where Nakamura's this. lost yeah. and Egg is well and truly on our faces. Yeah, that's what happens. It happened with uh, Good Joker. Um, yeah. Right, so we just our main event, which is Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal. Hard Body Mahal. Hard Body Mahal. Uh, and yes. Jesus Christ, he's huge. He's a massive guy. Yeah. I know who the uh, the other person on the Ascensions team was. Oh, who's that? It was Aiden English. Oh. And... Um, we were in bits at that singing gimmick. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. It was <laughs> so good. funny. Now, if they keep up with it and they do it, they do it well and have it on TV every week, yeah. the people will fucking hate him <laughs> and it'll be funny. It'll be so funny. Yeah. Keep Aiden English on WWE TV. Good. Well, uh, the, the singing gimmick okay. is very funny and comes across really well live. Cool. And he gets a, a lot of heat. <laughs> Good. So, um, should do. Yeah, definitely keep it. He comes out in sunglasses, wearing his scarf, and <laughs> singing, and all that. It's 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 very very funny. So uh, keep it, and just please do it justice. Just, yeah, just seriously. keep him on TV and have him do it every week and piss people off. Yeah, he imagine. can be the SmackDown equivalent to uh, the Drifter Elias Samson, uh, yeah. who, by the way, is not even wrestled yet. Has he? He's not. He's appearing randomly in the background of things, but uh, I don't think he's a hundred percent fit. Oh, really? I think he might be. Injured. That was played it. Okay. Um, that's the only reason I can think. Makes sense. Um, but I think he could do well as well. Yeah. Because do. again, he's someone else that the crowd just hates. Yeah, yeah, seriously. There's, no one likes the singing. Yeah. But uh, kudos to Aiden English. He can actually sing. He can, yeah. Yeah. Go better. Uh, anyway, <laughs> going back to... Uh, I, I Literally, yeah. the reason it made me think of it is because uh, I remember Jinder having like the most muscly back ever. Oh, yeah. But then I was thinking, someone else on that show had a muscly back. And it was Aiden <laughs> English. And I was like, that's who it was. Ah, and Aiden English backs. is... He, God, the guy is shredded. <laughs> like, he's got more muscles in his back than I have in my whole body. Yeah. This is... Nice. Unreal. Anyway, the main event. Yeah, hard up? body Jinder Mahal. Yes. Against the current... WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Randy Orton. Yes, Randall Keith Orton. Okay, Finn, we've had this conversation on the last episode of the podcast mm-hmm. uh, about Jinder. Yes. Now, neither of us had a massive problem with Jinder. No, he's fine. He's fine. I like, I like the new little heel faction we've got going. Yeah, some wrestling fans can't take it. <laughs> some wrestling fans are very angry. Some, some wrestling fans take it way too serious. Just I know we do a podcast about it, but some wrestling fans take it too far. Yeah. Take it way too serious and let it bother them more than it ever should. Seriously. It's, it's professional wrestling. wrestling at yeah. the end of the day. It's, we do a podcast about it because we enjoy it. Yeah. 
but it doesn't piss us off to the <laughs> to the point where we have to moan about it. No, they're gone endless rants. Yeah, in the it's time. look, <laughs> guys, just don't take it so serious. Enjoy yeah. it for what it is. It's fine. Entertainment. Do you know what could be good? You know. Do we moan about it? Yes, of course we moan about it, but we moan about it because we're not seeing what we want to see. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just fun. It's fun to moan. Yeah, it's fun to moan. But yeah. just don't take it so serious. Yeah, it's yeah, it's wrestling. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> so, because of that, Jinder Mahal's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I really think he might. I, I think, really he, think might he might as well. I think he might. Uh, I think the Bollywood boys will get involved. Yeah. And um, maybe cost Randy Orton the championship. Hmm. Um, weird, though. Huh? Seeing, seeing Jinder is from going to this complete job of losing every night and then suddenly, oh, I'm WWE champion. Yeah. But, be weird, but at the same but, time, I like it. But because wrestling. Because wrestling, yeah, exactly. It makes no sense at all. It doesn't, but it's the, fine. The <laughs> Colognes, which is what they're currently known as, were Primo and Epico and were WWE Tag Team Champions. Yeah. Now, something happened that made Vince Big. McMahon dislike them. Uh, and matadors, yeah. then they put a mask on them and put a midget with them. And then they were the Matadors. Now, they went from that to selling timeshares in uh, a, in the Caribbean, yeah. right? Or the Caribbean, whatever. In Puerto Rico. Um, the shining star of the Caribbean. Yes. Um, and they've now gone from that to being serious tag team contenders again. And they are now called the Colognes. Wrestling changes... Weekly, <laughs> it does, and this is just another example of it. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Just oh, me. Look, Matt Hardy was a crazy person in TNA. They yeah. came to WWE, and because they didn't have the the the, the rights, quote unquote, to be broken, yeah. they just had to be Team Extreme again, yes. like it was a nothing thing. Uh, the want. wrestling is just one of those ever-changing forms of entertainment. Uh, Aiden English was a vaude villain. Now he's singing again, which was his gimmick before when he was in NXT. Yeah, yeah. Um, Damien Sandow was the intellectual saviour of the masses, then was doing cartwheels as uh, a macho man impersonator. <laughs> God. Macho Mandow. Yeah. It's There's Dow on. Yeah. yeah. The, so Jinder is a legitimately tough-looking, main-event-looking dude. He is. Um... All right, here we go. Drew McIntyre was in 3MB <laughs> with Jinder Mahal. Yep. People are buzzing to see Drew McIntyre back in WWE and looking massive and looking strong. Yep. We saw him on WWE. Yes. He's great. And Heath was also in 3MB, didn't even get drafted, was the joke of WWE, then was the tag team champion for a little while. Yeah. I could sit here all day and reel off um, people, you know, just... Con- con- consistent changes in WWE throughout the years. It just, yeah. it just happens. It does. It's fine. I mean, come on. It's <laughs> Jinder's going to win. Yeah, I think he is. Well, and I think against. what happens when Jinder wins is Rusev comes back at Money in the Bank and they fight each other because obviously, of course, they were a team. Yes. They were hard body uh, Mahal and handsome Rusev. Does Rusev turn face day? The premise he got on SmackDown is very heelish. So, unless they make a triple threat, throw Randy in there as well, give him to rematch at the same time. Maybe. Um, unless Jinder's... I mean, it seems like a waste to, to not have Jinder win it. Because also they brought him up and they put him with the Bollywood boys, so they created that little faction now yeah, yeah. of dudes who are Indian in WWE at the same time. Well, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> That's basically what the faction should be called. Yeah, dudes who are Indian, Indian and in WWE at the same time, so we put them together. <laughs> Yeah. Um. <laughs> Good team, though. I'll take. Solid, catchy. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I-, I could see it really catching on. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they've, they've put them together and now they should capitalise on it. Yeah. Now they want to sure. make, the, they want to break into the Indian market. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it would make sense maybe to enter the Bollywood boys in the tag team division. Mm-hmm. The Singh Brothers. There you go. There's another ah, one. There you go. Singh Brothers. The Singh Brothers. That's what? not even their name. <laughs> it's not. Harvinger Shearer. Yeah. Where's Shira Singh brothers. in that? Where, yeah. Where's Singh that? The Shearer Brothers. Yeah. Does it, doesn't doesn't fall one? off the tongue as easy. I guess not, yeah. So they were the Bollywood boys two weeks ago in NXT. Now they're the Singh Brothers on SmackDown, wearing shirts and trousers. Yeah. And their heels. So without just, Bollywood just, dancing. Just because. 
because they're Indian. Just because wrestling. Yeah. And because they're Indian. At the same time as Jinder. Was it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> same, exactly. Dudes who are Indian and in WWE at the same time. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Solid name. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I think the same thing. I think Jinder's going to win it as well because it just makes, it just makes sense. So it gives them um, that new faction heat going forwards. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And I think Randy Orton's title reign is stale as shit already. Yeah. No one likes Randy Orton's champion. I don't think anybody cares that Randy Orton's champion. Yeah. Also, speaking of coming back to them being heels and getting booed, they're heels who get booed, which is a rare thing these days. <laughs> yeah. And they get booed, and I don't like to say it because they're Indian. Kind of, yeah. There but, is, uh, there, there's no two ways about it. That's not me being um, you know, racist in any way. They get booed because... They, and again, I don't mean this in a bad way. They're seen as the bad guy. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah, um, and again, I don't. You, you'll know what I mean. So don't take it out of. Yeah. yeah. Don't take that as me. You know what we mean. Yeah, Internet. being out of order because I'm not. <laughs> it's that's what it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but it's he like Mohammed Hassan know, before but, him. Ooh, yeah, Mohammed Hassan and Davari before. Mohammed Hassan, who was Canadian. And yeah. To be honest, Mohammed became Canadian as well. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so they they do they do this, and they have him speak in his own language to antagonise the American audience. Yeah, that's why they, they, the USA chants towards him. You know, it's just all of that sort of thing. Yeah, and that's hey, why is they he, work so well as a heel. Yeah, it's heat and it works. So I guess it's fine. Fuck. Rusev could come back and be a face, in my opinion. I agree, uh, because I think they've realised with Rusev that he's quite good at being funny. He is. So funny. Um, <laughs> What's up, up, down, down? It's hilarious. And that's that's one of my worries for Rusev because they've noticed this mm. and they had him do that Snickers advert where he was <laughs> dancing and being very funny. They had him play the... Um, they had they had him do that thing on Southpaw Regional Wrestling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and he was funny there. Yeah. So he could come back and be a face. And I wouldn't... I don't think Lana's going to be with him. No, I think Lana's going to off do her own thing being Lana Lena or whatever that is. Yeah. Like Lana the stripper. Yeah, there you go. I'm fine with it. Fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> because boobs are nice. Hashtag boobs are nice. Yeah, yeah. Brings it right back. So yeah, I think um, Jinder could be... I mean, it would bring that f- sort of full circle. Like they were together and then they fought a bit. Yeah. And they were, cause they were sort of forced together, weren't they? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're both foreign. There you go. Tag team. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Because... Yeah. Because nationalities, that's why. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, the uh, nation, what was it called? The League of Nations. League of Nations, there you go. Yeah. The whole thing. Sure, we've got four guys we don't know what to do. They're all from different places. Yeah, sure, League of Nations, that sounds great. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Team Canada. Like, again, you could do this forever. <laughs> yeah. <seriously. laughs> do this forever. Um, uh, I think Rusev and Jinder Mahal could have a cool little rivalry. I think so too. Uh, I don't need Randy Orton at all. No. He, he, yeah, I keep forgetting he's even champion. He's like, he turns up with his belt. It's like, oh yeah, he's a champion. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. So the long and short of it is, uh, we think Jinder will win. Yeah. And they said too. Yeah, I, we hope you've not taken offence to anything we've said. No. Because that's not how it's meant. No. Not, not at all. So Backlash is a, a five match pay per view as it stands. As, yeah, as it stands on that. There might be a new match made on this week's SmackDown, if you haven't seen it, because we've called it before. But um, yeah, so far, just five matches. To be honest, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, NXT only has a few matches, and they them shows go for two and a half hours, and they put on a great show. True. Um, Speaking of, um, this next NXT takeover, it's going to have the uh, uh, Tyler Bate versus um, um, Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne, that's the one. Uh, for the UK Championship, which I'm really looking forward to, because yep. the match on the UK Championship tournament was excellent. Uh, and I think Pete Dunne will win. Uh, yeah, I think so too, yeah. When is it? Um, two weeks. I want to say... Is it the week after... Backlash, or is it the week of Backlash? Maybe the same week. Oh, shoot, let's check. <laughs> Last minute adjustments. Because wrestling. Yes, because wrestling. So um, much wrestling. Yeah. NXT takeover. Chicago. 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 That's where CM Punk lives. Sort of be at least twenty-seven CM Punk chants. Especially when Hideo Itami used the DTS. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> you see on twi- on Twitter, Hideo Itami was like, "Chicago's a perfect place to use my GTS." like oh throwing shade yeah but he's <laughs> at the same time he's right I mean yeah he is <laughs> yeah. this is first he mentioned it yeah oh dear so um, any four matches on there so far it's going to be on May 20th which is next week next week yeah so we do that as well 
Well, let's do yeah. that. Yeah, why not? Right, so, Then four impromptu. matches, well, so you might as well. <laughs> Go for it. Cool. So, first match we have uh, would be Asuka versus Ruby Riot versus Nikki Cross and Triple Threats. Uh, originally, there was going to be a fatal four-way with uh, Ask, um, Ember Moon as well. But, unfortunately, she got injured. So, you're on. Sad face. Yeah, she's out for a while as well, um, I think, which is yeah. really, really, which is a real shame because really um, uh, I'm not personally a massive fan of her. Really? Yeah, I'm not that sold on her in truth, but um, I, like I think she's good. I just don't... She's a flippy stunner thing. That's cool. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but regardless of me liking her or not, it's a shame that she's injured uh, because I thought she would probably be the one to take the belt from Oscar. Yep. Um, to be honest, I can't see anybody but Oscar winning this. Um, yeah, I would have, I would have said um, Amber Moon if she'd been in a match that would win, but yeah, she's not going to be here, so I don't know. I can't see Ruby Riot winning, not yet. No, too soon. Same thing with Nikki Cross. Um, I mean, they are building towards something with Nikki. I think they need to do something to get um, sanity over a bit. Yeah, it's been, they're so the, about, they? I think they maybe need to give them the tag titles. Maybe. Um, maybe and the women's championship. Have them dominate. Yeah, why not? I mean, Jesus, the, you've got the talent pool there. Yeah, you've got have, Nikki, um, who is a, is a is a very is very very good. Yeah, she is. And she plays the crazy very well. Yes, very well. Um, you've got the two. You got Killian Dane, crap name, but crap name. Uh, and good um, what's the other one's name? Tyler Fulton. Um, or is that no, the it's one? a German dude who's called Alexander Wolf. Okay, Tyler Fulton was he the other one? I think he's the one who got injured. And, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so you've got the two big guys who could absolutely be tag team champions. And you've got Eric Young, who, you know, is a main event quality guy. He was, he, the, is, yeah. he was the TNA heavyweight champion. He could be the NXT champion. Why not? Yeah, why not? I'd, I'd buy it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, so they need to do something to get Sanity over, simply because I just don't think it works. And I don't know why it doesn't work. It just it work. doesn't come across... Well, yeah. So it's missing. The thing's missing. You need to find that X factor. Yes, you do. You need to make them dominant. You can't have them lose matches. Yes, agreed. Uh, so next we've got uh, the Authors of Pain versus uh, DIY Gorgano and Champa uh, for the tag team championships. This is in a ladder match, is it not? The ladder match. Yes, correct. Ooh, this has so much potential to be great. Oh, the yeah. authors, the Authors of Pain, have really won me over. Me too. I like them. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm torn here actually because I, I love DIY. Me too. Um, but do you think the losers of this could then go up? Maybe. I think I don't know. Yeah. Or do you have I'd the say. authors of pain just? I mean, you could have the authors of pain dominating the division for ages and ages and ages until somebody eventually does take it off them. For me, they're the ones that need to stay in NXT for now. Yeah, because they're still a little green. A little bit. I agree. Um, with DIY, you could send them up. Yeah. Uh, and I think with the revival being out for a little while, oh, the, yeah. that space is now there for for another team to move up and take that spot, at least whilst the revival are out of action. Yes. And DIY fill that gap. So Good I think point. I think the authors of Pain win, and DIY maybe move up to the main roster sooner rather than later. Yes, I think pretty right there. Um, yeah, I'd say AOP as well. Um, it's because they're, they're being portrayed as a dominant, massive force, and so force. And I'll tell you what's awesome about them as well. They are adapting to different styles of match. They are, yeah. Easily yeah, as yeah. well. Like, just with ease. So, you've got two enormous dudes here who are going to be in a ladder match. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, I we say it all the time. It's like, um, I can't remember which, what pay-per-view it was, but there's three enormous guys in a ladder match. Oh, yeah. And I can't remember which one it was. Um, but... Yeah, I think Authors of Pain win. I think DIY go to the main roster to mm. fill the void left by an injured revival. Well, yes. at least an injured Dash Wilder. Yeah, yeah. Got his jaw so Ouch. Not nice. Not nice at all. Bad times. Bad times. Wish him a speedy recovery, of course. Of course. Um, so yeah, I would say AB as well. Because, uh, because yes. Because they're big and sweaty. <laughs> they are large. They yes. are large. They probably do sweat a lot. <laughs> so we've got uh, Tyler Bate versus Pete Dunne for the UK Championship. Excited for this. Music. Excited for the UK guys to have that exposure because obviously they are bringing um, the UK Championship stuff to uh, the WWE Network. So mm-hmm. they're good. I think. Oh, cool. um, I think Pete Dunne will win. Okay. 
because I think there's a big future for him. I think there's a big future for a lot of those guys, but for Pete Dunne especially, there's just something about him that's special. Yeah, yes, you no, know, he has it. He does have it. Yeah, yeah. If there was an it. If there was ever an it, uh, he has it. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's good exposure and it's a good promotion for the upcoming weekly UK Championship TV show. Yep, yep. Um, my cousin, um, who works for the promoter was texting me during the um texting me during the tapings. Oh yeah. I was invited down but I couldn't go, unfortunately. Which sucks. But um yeah, she said it was amazing. And she says it looks like they're probably gonna do it monthly in different locations. Ooh. So once uh, like m- like monthly tapings is how it seems like it's gonna go and then they'll probably tape in bulk like NXT do and then you'll see it after that on the WWE network. So I think nice. you'll probably see it in a in a in a few weeks. Inside. In fact, if that match was determined on the UK Championship, surely they should maybe start it on this week. Maybe. Because otherwise, <laughs> you're going to see the first episode after Pete Dunne's won the championship. Yeah. Good point. Weird. So I don't know how they're going to work that. So maybe, um, maybe Pete Dunne won't win. Maybe that means they'll keep um, keep it on um, Tyler Bay for now. No, no, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter either way. I guess not, yeah. <laughs> Weird. Okay. Okay. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, Pete Dunne because because his is his really good. Yep. <laughs> but Tyler Bates really good as well. But Pete Dunne's just got the evil look scowl going. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, the the thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's just he's awesome. He's great. Um. So then the last match we got is uh of course Bobby Roode versus Hideo Itami for the NXT Championship. Cool to see Hideo um in this position now. Very cool. Um, for the championship. He's had so much bad luck with, with injuries and stuff during his time in NXT. Yeah. Um, and I think fortune has, bad fortune has favoured him a little here because now everyone's gone. <laughs> yeah, he's lovely. Poor Hideo is still there. Yeah. And needs this. Bobby Roos just turned 40. Wow, is he? Blimey. Didn't Today, like I think. Wow. Many happy returns. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I heard, that's a weird saying, many happy returns. It is, isn't it? So yeah. you ha- ha- hope you get more birthdays. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Cheers. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, some of you say many happy returns in assemblies, like, sure. Yes, hope you don't die. So, uh, mm, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> um, I would love to see Hideo win the championship. Me too. But he won't. I agree. But, <laughs> however, it is in Chicago. True. Would there be something symbolic about him winning the NXT Championship in Chicago using the GCS? <laughs> Maybe. Take that, CM Punk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, CM Punk doesn't give a shit. Couldn't care He less. doesn't yes. oh, okay. But <laughs> WWE absolutely care, and it bothers them. Even now, the CM Punk isn't there anymore. Yeah. Um, Bobby Roode, like I said, said, he's turned 40 years old. He has to move up soon. True. Maybe he could lose the belt to Hideo. And they could keep this feud going until eventually Bobby Roode moves up and they've moved someone else into that position where they can fight for the title. Because mm. you've got a lot of good people there now. You you, you know, CN Almas could fight for the NXT title. You've obviously got Drew Galloway. Oh, yes. Um, the aforementioned Eric Young. Like, that, you know, that to help boost sanity. Yep. There's, there's a lot of good guys. I mean, they, they seem to be building Roderick Strong up at the minute for uh, something big in his future. True, true. Uh, by showing the vignettes of how he's come up every single week, which apparently are going down very well. Yes. Um, so I see big things for Roderick Strong. Rodders. Bobby Roode is 40 years old. His time has to come soon on the main roster. Yes. And I mean soon. Yes. You know, I mean, how old's Undertaker? 49? 40? 507. 40, he's not, he's in his, yeah. fact, he's got to be over 40, 50, hasn't he? I think so, I think he's in his 50, yeah. Well, either way, I mean, how much, Bobby Roode is in good condition, of course. Yeah. But Triple H is only, he's not 50 yet. No, I don't think so. Oh, I don't think he is. No. How much longer can Bobby Roode realistically go? Good question. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Hideo here. Okay. I'm going to go with Hideo, and then I'm going to see them carry this feud through to the takeover that... Is is next, which I'm assuming is somewhere near SummerSlam. Probably. And then you'll see Bobby Reed after, uh, t- either at or just after SummerSlam. Mm, interesting. Good prediction. Uh, Triple I'm, H is 47. And then Jacob is 52. Right. Yeah, so Triple H is not... Act, he's barely active. I know Triple H is doing more than what Bobby Reed is, but Triple H is not active 
at 47 years old. Hmm. Bobby Roode has been wrestling for a long time. Yes. At a top level. True. Um, he has to go to the main roster soon. I agree. But just to be different, because we've had probably the same thing so far, I want to say Rude. Um, and you are probably right. <laughs> I, I, I'm doing that thing where I sort of read too much into a situation and I'm wrong. But <laughs> I just feel like it would be beneficial to Hideo as well. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I, I agree with you. It would make perfect sense for him to uh, uh, win it and to go to the main roster. Um, I don't think he will pretty soon, but I, I don't think he's going to win it. He's going to lose it just yet. Hideo needs it, I think. He needs something he big. Need it, yeah. I agree. Because... He's had, he has had a poor run and they built him up like he was going to be the big thing. Yeah. Kent yeah. is coming over from Japan. Oh, oh my, my God, God, this is a massive signing for us. And it just... Injuries and stuff happened and it didn't work out for him uh, in his early NXT days. Now, I think, is it has to be his time. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. And uh, yeah, many four matches so far. There might be another one added uh, in between now and then. Maybe but... I think you'll see Drew. Oh, well, yeah. Very Drew versus Almas. Something like that. Maybe, yeah, Drew versus Almas, something like that. Um, maybe the other guys from Sanity on the pre-show or something like that. But I think you'll maybe. see um, Drew versus uh, Cian Almas. Drew is too much of a hot commodity for NXT for him not to be at NXT TakeOver. Yeah, seriously. Um, and then after that, the, the guys are the NXT guys are coming over here. And I will be in Manchester Nice to see NXT. Sweet. So buy tickets to go and see NXT in Manchester. And if you listen to this <laughs> podcast, you can... Drop us a message on Twitter and you can come say hello to me in Manchester at NXT. Yeah. It's only a very small venue. It's like three or, th- three or four thousand. It's not sold out yet. So grab your tickets and come say hello to me. Cool. Good times. Excellent. Right. And uh, yeah, that's what we've got. Finn. Hello. This week's episode <laughs> of the oh, Games and Grouts podcast oh, has been brought to you by the letter. Uh, the letter uh, L. L. Yes. Okay, I don't think we've had L before. I don't think so. Okay. Well, Lillian Garcia. Oh wait, we have because there's a load of um, load of like small wrestlers. Oh. They're all called Little Something. Oh, of course. Yeah, I remember. Okay. Los Conquistadors. <laughs> little Lord Littlebrook, Little Tokyo, Little Boogeyman, it's Little Brutus. Jesus God. Christ. <laughs> uh, Linda McMahon. Little Beaver. Good name. Oh God. I've missed this section yeah, of, the, of the podcast. Yeah. Good old Lex Luger. Here's a, here's a British name for you. Les Thornton. Oh, nice. I'm not going to do him because I don't need to. <laughs> Layla, she's British as well. She is? Well, sort of. Sort she of, got, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> the living legend, Larry Zabisco. Lance Storm. Lance Cade. Ooh. Lance Cassidy. How's the Lances? Yeah. I don't know who these guys are, so let's go for that. Okay. Oh, no, that's a double against McKay, so I can't go with that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm trying to find a crap one here. I usually find a crap one really quickly, but... We'll get one, don't worry. We'll get one. We'll get there. We'll get one. We'll get one. Luther Reigns. Oh, nice. Luther Reigns. Yeah. Kurt Angle. I know him. Introduce the world. In fact, let's do this properly. Okay. Height six foot five, weighing in at two hundred and ninety five pounds from Phoenix, Arizona. Mm. Luther Reigns. His signature move was the Reign of Terror because his name. Reigns. Hmm, that sounds familiar. I suppose Roman Reigns doesn't have something that <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if uh, Luther is related to to Roman. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe long lost brother or some kind or cousin. I think that's probably likely. Probably. Sure. <laughs> Kurt Angle introduced the world to Luther Reigns in April 2004 with Angle then laid up in a wheelchair Reigns was hired to be the then Smackdown General Manager's assistant essentially he was brought on board to help Angle get around and aid in certain business dealings but as nearly, but at nearly £300 it was only a matter of time before Reigns ditched his suit and begun an in-ring career Ooh. Ooh. after decimating Funaki in his debut rip I'm sure that was uh, <laughs> sure that was tough. Yeah, yeah. Near three hundred pound guy and a tiny little Japanese man. <laughs> Reigns earned a pay per view match against Charlie Haas at the Great American Bash. Hmm. What a, what a like Funaki, Haas found himself overmatched by Reigns' impressive power. Mm. 
Reigns formed a tag team with Mark Jindrak because, of course, he did in September 2004. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Jindrak was going to be the, one of the original members of Evolution. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Instead of Batista. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in one of their most memorable moments, the duo distracted Big Show long enough for Angle to chop down the world's largest athlete with a tranquilizer dart. Oh, God, I remember that. That was awful. <laughs> While out, the trio of superstars celebrated their conquest by shaving Big Show's head bald. Oh, yeah. Because it's... Yeah. Because... Hair. Because wrestling in the hair and yeah. that's the whole thing. Prior to his WWE release in May 2005, so he lasted long, <laughs> Reigns stood across the ring from some of the greatest, including Eddie Guerrero, Undertaker and John Cena. Oh, there you go. So his career lasted about as long as Finn's yawn did just then. <laughs> Pretty much. This week's episode of the Games and Graps podcast was brought to you by the letter L. Ooh. Boys and girls, this has been episode 61 of the Games and Grass podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts nearly every single Friday across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. Most Fridays. <laughs> Most Fridays. And youtube.com forward slash sunnyfinplay and youtube.com forward slash daydreamergaming. Yeah. Thank you very much for your support, both with the podcast and with Daydreamer Gaming. Everything is going our way. Yes. <laughs> Stick around. There's so much more to come. But for now, I'm Sunny. I'm Finn. And we will speak to you next time, boys and girls. Thank you very much. Thank Goodbye. You much. Goodbye.